know how this goes trying to find this guy. some music that's what i had to uh maybe he's coming in on stream waves i, I see you came in on stream waves tv but where's your request to join there you go there i is What's up, my dude? What's going on? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm not, nah, I'm good, man. Can't complain. Yo, right. I'd like to say happy birthday, man. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. I try and hide that. I don't celebrate my birthday, but this daggone technology, man, social media, it always catches me. But anyway, man, let's just get right to it, man. Thank you for being my second guest on Creativity with the Creative. Right. And um, I'm excited to have you on along with my other future guests last week was Sean D, videographer, YouTuber, all of that good stuff. But, you know, your accomplishments, your resume, your portfolio is bananas, you know, and both of us hailing from East Elmhurst, Queens, New York, hanging out at 127 Park. Uh, your brother was down, Donnie Dance Master with the crazy banana, system, banana of a system, along with many others. But who would ever thunk it? And that's why I said funk that, you know, fast forward to today and, um, you know, what, what's what been accomplished. So I just want to briefly go into the beginning. Like, what sparked it for you in regards to your journey? What sparked it? Man, just living in the neighborhood. Just watching, you know, watching you guys as a kid. Just y'all were older than me, so... Um, just looking at the Super 7 with you and, and Bernard and Herbie and Cleve and, you know, the whole seven of y'all. Well, I mean, the interesting thing is... I, I wanted to be a part of that, you know? Yeah, we had two crews. You know, you had to turn our brothers into super lovers. Yeah, that, came, that came after. Yeah, that's that true. And, that. and Kid was part of that crew with you. I, right. What I'm trying to veer away from, because this thing is about technology and creativity... I think where I want to start with is I know the story of what motivated you or kind of pushed you into attending Howard University. So I think that's where things started really. Can you talk to yeah. me about that? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, me coming to Howard, that was that was something that wasn't really planned. It, it, it just happened. You know, I, I came out of high school and, um, and I wanted to rap. I wanted to be a rapper. And my sister was going to Howard. And she filled out my application because she was gone. So come time, I get an acceptance notice. And I got two weeks to make up my mind. So now I have to look at the rest of my life. Like, what am I going to do? Everybody else is doing something. Kid plays blowing up. Herbie got saw on Vepa. And I'm sitting there trying to figure out what my next move is going to be. So... I feel like I'm getting left behind, but I have to find myself. I think a lot of people can relate to that, and I, I appreciate your transparency with that because yes. I know I went through a period of what the heck am I going to do? I was I was doing I was involved in some perilous things, but yeah. still that question was there. So here you are at Howard, and um, what comes to mind is two kings and a cipher, you know. Talk to me a little bit. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, coming to Howard and then meeting, meeting D-Dot and, you know, meeting everybody else, that was just like a whole nother world for me, just coming to D.C. and just being outside of my element, leaving Queens, New York, in, in a whole different world. So now it's like I have to reinvent myself. And um, and it helped me find myself, too. So, you know, we, I formed a group with D-Dot. We formed two kids in a cipher. Um, and having to find ourselves and find our niche and just doing our own thing with nobody else's help, it, it, it was a learning lesson. It was a, it, it's something that, that, you know, it taught me a whole lot about the business because it's like I had to go, go to school to 
to learn about um, the industry, you know, from afar, learning how to be an artist, learning how to be a producer and learning about the music business and, you know, the, the ups and downs, the in and, in and outs and the trials and tribulations and, you know, the pitfalls and, you know, and all the other th stuff. So, you know, it was definitely a, um, a learning lesson. I learned a lot from it and, you know, um, it humbled me. And I also wanted to show you guys that, um, that I was able to accomplish it without, without the help of y'all, you know, being that I came from that unit, I wanted to establish myself without going through the Herbie's machine. Right. Right. But what else was, what else was parallel that was happening synonymous as you and D dot as you're doing your thing. There's another cat, another student in the building as well and how did those things merge you know well yeah there were, there were plenty of students you know well puffy for one of them like everybody knows mm -hmm. but he um you know when he and i met and i used to take him around i actually took him to his first studio session which was at um which was a kid play session based bayside studios Bayside studios yeah he went to see a recording studio and i took him to bayside and it was a kid play session and, uh, you know, that was like something for him to like, you know, to expand on his dream because wow. he worked on a record company and he wanted to know what his studio was like. Talk about six degrees of separation, how yeah. those yeah. things come about. Yeah. But how now, like, what was your, what was your first project? What was your first record? What was it, that thing that was that defining moment at that period? in your journey well the first record i would say probably was to be honest always yeah i mean outside of you know the, the production that, that i did for myself right it was probably when i worked with sugar when i worked with sweet tea we did this record called what's up star mm. yeah that was on the show soundtrack and that went platinum wow yeah and that was through jimmy roseman everybody knows him as jimmy henchman and Jam Master J, you know, she had a video in, in the whole nine. So that right there, you know, that was a good feeling. That was kind of like the beginning of, of the new journey for me. Moving to LA and then coming back to New York and then starting, you know, um, my production. So what was the first hit? The you first know, hit? That, that okay, one, first. it was like, Okay, well, the first hit, the first hit was, um, it was probably MC Light, MC Light, a uh, co-rocker party. And right after that came Tracy Lee, the theme, and they happened almost at the same time, probably weeks apart. And that was like around the fall of 90, I would say the fall of 96. Right. Yeah. And then following after that came Epitaph. So it was like one, two, like one, two and three, you know. The knockout punch was hypnotized, and that came in March of of, of ninety seven. So, can you name all of the artists you've worked with? Because I'm going to move it on to the the other parts of your, you know, what you do. But can you name a few of the artists you've worked with? Yeah, I'm about to look on my wall right now. Okay, Notorious, do that. <laughs> Notorious B.I.G., Mace, uh, Diddy, of course, Faith Evans, uh, Brian McKnight, uh, Mary J. Blige. Jay Z, Black Rob, Deluxe, Luther Vandross, Carl Thomas, um, who else? Mm, Terror Squad, Lord Tariq Peter Guns, uh, the Mau Mau Clan with Most Death, um, was Most Death, Cannabis. And a few other cats, and I was off the. Um, well, the, well, you uh, said you had a. Beyonce, you said you had, can't forget Beyonce. That was a big one. Oh, Rita Beyonce, Franklin, no doubt. Rita Franklin, can't forget that. Um, Boys to Men. Did I say Prime at Night? I did say that, right? Well, as far as I'm sir, concerned, you said you had a point to prove, and you didn't want to be under the Herbie machine and prove to us you you did that and then some. So right. now fast forward a little bit and the thing that you and I engage in quite a bit because we do have something in common back then is we both attended, not at the same time, the High School of Art and Design. 
Yes, yes, yes. yes. And uh, and I didn't know, you know, till we talked about it as old men, older men do, that you know you went there. I didn't know that you that you did your thing with the pen and paper. But at what point did it come from the production of music and all these hits and these people you work with to start being interested in cinematography? Because you have been, a, along with a couple of others, an encouraging help to me. And when it was time for me, my prayer to the Lord was, okay, I could do my thing with a pen and paper, but how can I do the learning curve now and know more about the computer? And that's when you and I even got closer as, you know, I would be, I guess, annoying to you, asking you questions. How do you do this with this app, this, that, and this and that? What brought you into that field? Well, I mean, being an artist, first and foremost, starting off, you know, drawing as a kid, that was like my first love. Ditto. And um, I always wanted to be an artist. All my friends from childhood would, would tell you that. I used to draw Bruce Lee all day and anything I could think of. But... um that and then going into architecture and learning about picture plane and learning about perspective and all that stuff. Um, you know, and I always liked movies. I just, to me, it was just far fetched. I just couldn't understand that world, but I knew that was something that I would want to do. And it was just like music. It was just as a kid, when you think about it, when you think about production, when you think about what goes on in movies, when you don't know, you think it's difficult because there's nobody to really teach you. And um, me getting into music and me understanding the technology side of it, Pro Tools, I have that stuff up, by the way. We, we, we'll talk about all the softwares. But learning Pro Tools, which is an audio software, that was kind of like a bridge into getting into editing. Yes. You know? So, you know, when my, when my son was born, I bought a camera. Uh, um, it was a uh, the, the Canon Rebel. That was like the first model of the the, the Canon series. Yes, know, sir. The, the marks and all that other stuff. But you know, I had picked up a camera when I was a kid. You know, my brother gave me a camera for Christmas, and um, because he taught me how to shoot, he was a model, and uh, he would take me out to. Uh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah, he would take me out to um, uh, uh, what's that park? Flush Meadow Park. And he would show me how to use the camera and I would take his pictures for him. And I did such a good job that he said, I, I'm going to buy you a camera for Christmas. And he bought me a 110 camera. That was, that was the model. And I would take, and I would take pictures with that camera everywhere I went, you know, and then I graduated into like different models and stuff like that. But I was always taking pictures as a kid. As a kid, I would go to like, which around with y'all in clubs, I would take pictures um, and even when I went to college, I used to brag to my friends that I knew Eric B and Rakim and, and nobody believed me. So when I would go home on breaks, I would take the camera and I would take pictures. And I still right, have all right. these pictures piled up. So I stayed with all these pictures up and I would bring them back to school and everybody would be like, yo, what's up, yo, okay, you know him, whatnot. You know, I've got the photo album and everybody would come to the crib, I mean, to the, um, to the dorm room. And, you know, they was just excited because a lot of people didn't know what, Rock him look like, or what Kid and Play look like, or what right. G Rap look like, any of them. But I had the pictures to prove it because I grew up with those cats and I could take those pictures, you know. Right. So just learning about the camera, and then you know when my son was born, I, like I said, I bought the Canon Rebel and I, I would take a lot of pictures of him. And one of my friends was like, "You need to go. You, you got an eye. Like you, you should, you should go to film school." And um, so I thought about it. And this was like, you know, the height of my production career as a producer. I took time out and I said, all right, I'm going to um, enroll in the, in, in the New York Film Academy to see what it was about. So I took the course and, um, and, and they taught me hands on. They taught me how to shoot film, so a Super 16 film, reversal right. um, of film. And I learned how to develop and all that stuff. And I learned editing at the same time. But it came easy to me because I understood Pro Tools, which I right. like. Yeah, from from um from music. And um but it was crazy because the teacher thought I was cheating because um I was a little ahead of the class and the stuff the kind of work that I was um uh dishing out, she she didn't believe me that I I was that I was an amateur. She thought I was cheating because she kept asking that, you know, 
are you sure that you you know you haven't had uh, any type of uh, film classes before and i would be like no and she didn't believe me but um you know it just made me that much stronger and made me feel that um uh gave me more confidence to know that i was doing such a good job and the fact that she didn't believe that it was like my first try you know i know that feeling i started out on a system called edius and then from edius i went on to um final cut pro right right right. and i remember when i started getting with um started getting with tutors so to speak in that field and when i would come back each week because i was being taught when they had the one-on-one at apple right. and i remember the instructor i dealt with she had a hard time believing i did that stuff she was like you did this i surpassed her and i think she kind of lost interest in me she's like what the heck do you need me for so i know that kind of that situation but um so it's I'm amazing gonna... to huh okay i'm sorry go ahead. it's amazing to me you know, when you speak of how Pro Tools was that bridge in regards to helping you with the fundamentals yeah. of um, of those um, particular um, editing suites and things of that nature. Right. So so understanding architecture and the picture plane and all that stuff, that helped me with, you know, a lot of those, um, those graphic sites like Cinema 4D and learning 3D and stuff like that. And, you know, just doing those avatars and right um yeah and photoshop and all that stuff so you know everything came in handy well what's your famous lane in production like there's so many lanes there's editing there's graphics there's the music part there's principal photography there's post-production pre-production like what what do you what do you it's for me i know i do well in editing but i like the other components too but like, what do you feel? What do you like the most, and what do you excel in the most? Uh, I would say the editing, and and the um, the editing, and and also the shooting aspect of it. Those are the two two that I that I feel that I excel the most in. You know and, what? Me, and and when I say editing, when I say editing, that also goes um, to. A, to the audio part as well because i create i create music through editing like i don't have to use a drum machine anymore right i could take bits and pieces of samples and put them together you know well, i mean how fascinating it is for a guy like ron lawrence multi-platinum award-winning artist to be putting together the video part of it and for you to be doing the music original music or whatever the case may be Right. And the reason why I ask that question that way is because, like I said, what you may like doing may not be the same as in what you excel in. Like, what is a quick study for you to learn? Like, for me, editing is, is easy, but it's thing I like filming, too. But what's kind of frustrating is when you're doing it all. And um, it's like it's great when you're doing the filming and it's time for you to edit it because you know what you shot where if you're working with someone else there's this thing you have to do finding out what angle what 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 take was good all of that do you find yourself wrestling with that at times or is it easy with easy to you i mean it's always easy for me it, the problem i have is you know i don't like to work under anybody that's mm. my problem that's why i don't take that's why i don't do outside jobs the only reason why i edit is i do it for myself yeah. But if I got to work for somebody else and somebody's telling me what to do, it's a problem. Because I don't like to be micromanaged and I don't like to work for anybody. Right. Yeah. I feel you on that. that you, well, you can never hire me to edit a project because that's not, that I'm not built for that. <laughs> well, let's, let's get to something that a project you did that was amazing and most people may have seen it or may not. We'll introduce it to them now. One of your pieces that is phenomenal is founding fathers and big yeah. shout out to hassan uh yeah. and hassan i'll tell you yo he, he and i we were literally li we were literally fighting when we were doing that documentary oh i remember <laughs> i was almost caught in the middle of some of that stuff at times yeah. because i remember he came to me wanting to wanting me to help edit it right. but then it got to the point back to my point it was better for you to do it because you knew what you shot yeah, you but see, what you I was, right. I wasn't supposed to edit it originally. 
because that, around that time I had learned editing, but I wasn't confident enough to feel that I could do a documentary. So we right. gave it for somebody else to do. So Hassan right. knew a young guy that we considered him as an intern. But um, it was a little, the way, you know, we had to, Hassan had to pick him up. We were living in, in Atlanta at the time and they had to drive him to the, to, the, to the crib. And he was young. He was like maybe 17 years old. And it was very, um, uh, it was very inconvenient. So I said, you know what? Let me just go ahead and just roll up my sleeves and let me just start editing. And I, and I know Hassan probably thought I was crazy when I took on a job. But, <laughs> you know, and I think the first well, thing... Well, I thought I did, it was best for me to get out the way because, again, you knew what you shot. Right. I know for, has I know for, I know he has sent it to you after the fact. After the, after the kid didn't work out, we sent it to you. Yeah, yeah. But, see, I knew it was better. I had just come out of a project. As a matter of fact, I had worked on a project called Apartment 36D with Salt from Salt and Pepper. Big up to Kim. I see she, she joined us. Um, and, man, I did everything wrong. But I did what I needed to do to fix it, you know, because if I would have dealt with a professional to help me put it together, I probably would have felt embarrassed. I probably would have felt a little defensive when they would ask me, well, where's this shot at? Oh, da -da -da -da. where's the audio for this one? I didn't know that. All of it was in my head. I didn't know how to talk that talk. So like you're saying, I think, leave me alone. Let me do it. Let me take some creative license. I'll fix it. Right. Now, what we've done, which isn't fair, Please share with the people what Founding Fathers was about. Well, it, it originally started off as an East Commerce history. So when, when Hassan and I decided to, um, when we set out to do it, we wanted to tell a story about the, the hook. But then we realized it was a lot bigger than that. Because when we started going out and we started looking for King Charles, we started looking for new sounds and started looking for the SMS and those guys. And we realized that we had to go outside of the scope. The next thing you know, we were in Jamaica, Queens. And then it's like, well, you know, now we're in Brooklyn. Now we, we were Grandmaster D and uh, DJ Flowers. Flowers. Yeah. Then now we got Brooklyn. We need to go to Manhattan. We need to find DJ Hollywood. Yeah. So it just started getting bigger. Because then we realized that it just wasn't about East Thummers. It was about the other boroughs that didn't get to tell their story. Well, one of the things that's amazing in it, amongst other things, is the history, you know, dealing with tech as we do here, or try to, is the Richard Long story. The whole story about Pete DJ Jones yeah. and the evolution of the mixer and how that played a big part and, and how DJs benefit from that today. How Richard Long had invented one thing and how what we're famous for in hip hop, we turn it into something else. Right. So that was amazing, too. But. You know, what was the controversy about the documentary? You want to get into that? The question that it raises? Yeah, well, the, the, the big question that it raises uh, about hip-hop starting, not starting in the Bronx. So that's what the problem was. But, you know, the documentary really wasn't about that. It's, it's how I edited or how, how, you know, Hassan and I came together and we, we, we put the trailer to, you know, to, to make it seem like it was... Um, uh, to get attention. So, to get attention. Make yeah. it, you know, it was sort of like a beef between Queens and Brooklyn versus the Bronx. But we, but it was an attention to get up to pe for people to watch the documentary. But when you got to watch the documentary, you saw that it wasn't like that. It wasn't about hip-hop starting in these dumbers. It was just about these guys telling a story about how they got left out of history and they wanted this story to be preserved. They wanted people to know, you know, what they were about. Like, who was King Charles? Nobody, people forgot about King Charles. People forgot and, about and, the Disco and, Twins. Right. People forgot about these guys, you know? But I think what the documentary did is, is, is it, brought, it brought them back on the radar. It brought things back to life. And now people can, can talk about, you know, uh, P.T.J. Jones. People could talk about Flowers. And, you know, and I'm watching, what's the, what's the TV show that came on Netflix? Oh, uh, the, the Get Down. The Get Down, yeah. They, they mentioned um, DJ Flowers and, and, you know, those guys. Like, they probably wouldn't have even thinking about them had, you know, Found Their Fathers not come out. Well, it also so, didn't hurt that your narrator is Chuck D, you know, and that was right. phenomenal. That brought some right. credibility and authenticity to you because Chuck D just isn't going to do anything. 
It brought you know a lot of credibility. It brought a lot of credibility to the documentary. Right. So, I mean, I think had Chuck, Chuck D not been been on it, I think people would have probably tried to dismiss it altogether. Right. But right. um, but you know, Chuck, like you said, Chuck brings a lot of credibility. And well, I the thing is, help. you know, we do want to say for those that we may have piqued your curiosity to like, what is this documentary? They can find it and watch it on YouTube. Correct. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. called founding fathers yes. we plan yeah out. yeah we plan to release the hd version um so so how did you film that what was your what was your tool of choice what would you i know you spoke about the rebel series in the beginning of your journey with cameras but what was what was you because for me my early cameras was i don't know if you remember the sony pd 150 with right. the digital cassettes mm -hmm. Yeah, at, the, at that time, the camera of choice was the X, was the Canon XL1 and the, and the GL1. Wow, that was top of the line back then. So that's yeah. what was, that's what that documentary was shot on. So you're talking mm -hmm. 2005. Yeah, you know. So um, that documentary is literally where we like 15 years, 15 years now. Yeah. That long? But we have an age, but I mean, I have a digitized version that's yet to be released. I mean, the version that's on YouTube is not the best quality in the world, but, um, you know, it's a lot cleaner than that. And, um, you know, the next time we, we will do a presentation, you get to see it, a much better quality version of what it's really supposed to look like. I'm going to try and articulate this as best I can. I think it's phenomenal because you and I, we're big historians. We talk all day about right. history. Uh, we can go into politics. We definitely get into hip hop and all of that. We have been so blessed to have been at the right places at the right time to see some defining moments in hip hop and to actually be a part of it. So for you to be like when I remember when you and I was at a party in Florida and, um, you know, remember, I think they threw on hypnotize. They threw on one of your hits. Mm -hmm. And I asked you, I said, how does it feel to see people react in a club and a party to a joint that you did like did did? But you know the artist gets and and uh, and 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 um, credibly so get the credit they get for it. But here you are at the party; they don't even know that you're responsible for this track. So for you to have that experience and do that, and then now to successfully get into documentaries and things of that nature, you know, I'm going to watch the time. I definitely want to talk about, you know, what what is your weapon of choice now? What is your what is your tool of choice now as far as cameras and stuff go? And what are you working on now as far as more cinema cinematography endeav endeavors? Um, I mean, right now I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking to upgrade. Like I've been dealing with the, the Mark three for the longest, you know, like, and you know, I had to roll in um, Zen use with the, um, with the Rokinon lenses and stuff, but I'm looking to get into that. The new, what is it? The, the Canon R, what is it? R5? Yeah, you would ask me what's a good, which one I told right, you that. Right, right. I've heard about the Canon R5 and the 6. I think the 5 just came out because the as I'm watching, is, yeah, the five I'm watching is the one my people because, are showing it. The 5 is the one because of the dynamic range. The, um, mm -hmm. you know, shooting raw gives you high dynamic range. It gives you all the, you know, the shades, you know, take takes you down to, um, you know, as far as um, when you're shooting in darkness or shooting the light, you just get a whole, a big, big spectrum to work with. And, you know, I, I just like shooting raw. And that's my thing. I've always shot raw, and, you know, with the Canon. And, um, you got to watch how you say HDR. that. Huh? You got to watch how you say that. We're talking cameras, y'all. You like shooting raw, so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, but um, boom. But yeah. my thing is, is that, you know, you're, you're canon. I've gone black magic because I've dedicated now solely to cinematography. So no more that autofocus and all of that stuff, like straight, you know, what it takes for that kind of look. But I'm, I'm, it, I'm you know, I'm going to be knocking at your door once you get that canon because I'm hearing a lot of exciting things about it. Um, but everybody's at the edge of their seat to see what happens with Sony with the A7S III, you know. And Sony ain't no joke with the low lighting, but you said you definitely want to mess with, keep it full frame, correct? Yes. Yeah. Why? Full frame, yeah. Um, that's, I mean, that's the, that's standard. That's industry standard. You're talking 35 millimeter. That's full frame. I mean, that goes back to like the early 1900s. Well, I went to three quarter. That's my thing now. Three quarter. But 
You said that's that's the standard. That's, yeah, it's always been a standard there. Full frame, thirty five millimeter, twenty four p. I mean, that goes back to the early nineteen hundreds. That's always been, you know. And what are you going? And what's your, what, 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 what what will be your purpose for this new weapon? What do you have your eyes on? What's what's going on in that head of yours as far as a project? What's your next thing? Oh man, that's. I mean, there's so much I want to do, but because of COVID nineteen, it just it, it kind of it stifles my creativity because I can't move around the way I want to. I want to be able to take a camera and I want to be able to go document stuff or if I need to go interview somebody, you know. But right now we're in a position where the most we can probably get is uh, a Zoom interview because I don't want to be sitting in a room with somebody else. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's why I've cooled out. I fall back on brand news in life, my news situation, because I did do some Zoom interviews and I will post those soon, but it isn't anything I want to stick with because I need that live experience, you know, and that the B-roll. Uh, we're going to start taking questions soon. I see my man Daniel Mallison asked, uh, I guess we were talking about in regards to the camera, he, he was wanting to know, is there a pixel issue? You're like, are you, he asked, is it the pixels? Is that the reason why you're feeling the Canon uh, R5? Well, the reason I'm feeling a Canon R5 is because... We're taking questions, y'all. Go yeah. ahead. Okay. Um, okay. The raw aspect of it, because it shoots, it, 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 it just doesn't shoot in a way where the, um, the footage becomes compressed. When it's shot raw, then you can manipulate the footage. You can do so much with it. You can let in a lot of colors and... Um, color grading, color correction. There's just so much you can do with it. So yeah, the pixels, definitely, because you can do a lot of cropping. I think it's up to like 64 megapixels now. Uh-huh. The R5, opposed to like, okay, what is the, what is the, um, um, uh, the Sony, uh, the Sony model to do right now? Where no one knows. That's okay. the big mystery. Because we're, we're, you know, the thing, I have the A7S II. Yeah, what's so the, the pixels thing, on that? Well, I, I deal with bit. It's only 8-bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's got to have pixels, too. No, I know. That I don't know. That was my fancy okay. way of saying I don't know. But I know what disturbed me about it was challenging, and thank God I used the Shogun Inferno to upgrade to bigger bit. Like, I think it went to a 10. But that's the thing that most people are frustrated with. But, um, yeah, so I don't know. No one knows right now. That's the big mystery since Black Magic came out. I, I meant to text you earlier to talk to let you know if you don't know already about the Z Cam. You know that's the, the other joint now, the Square joint that um is, is uh, Asian made mm -hmm. and all of that. I'm watching our time here. Let's talk about your online streaming service, Streamwaves. Yes, Streamwaves. Why? Well, here's a question: Why? Why? I mean, I always challenge myself. I always try to figure out what I can do and what I can't do. And um, and it was something that I just wanted to to build myself. I actually built the site myself. That's right. Because, um, you know, it, it's, it's, all, it's really all about being, you know, being an entrepreneur and just trying to figure out what your next move is going to be. And I wanted to own a streaming site. So I said, well, let me learn how to build one. And, you know, that's what I did. Right. And I wanted to do it because, you know, I've been in a situation, especially with founding fathers, you sit with these these big execs and they tell you all this stuff and then nothing happens, you know. And then you got to go through so much and you because you're at their mercy, you know what I'm saying? And um, I just, I just didn't want to be in that situation anymore. So I said, you know, I need to just go ahead and build something for myself and I can put my own movies on there rather than going to Netflix and knocking on that door with a thousand other people. And it's good to have a friend yeah. that has a streaming service that when I finish with my movies, I go to my dude. So what is Streamwaves? Well, Streamwaves, is, like you said, it's, it's a streaming platform. You, you know, you can watch documentaries. It, 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 it's an urban version. Not, I hate to use the word urban, but it's it's more of... It's similar to what Netflix is, but it's it's more like, you know, it has an edge to it, if you know what I mean. I don't know how to pronounce this person's name, but they answered our question with the A7S 
is 12.2 me megapixels. And it's Shock Rosh. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm about to butcher your name. But anyway, so, so you have this so, okay, so so that means so that means the Mark Three with um Magic Lantern that had more megapixels then. So yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, because yeah, because it shot it shot in raw. But what made the so, A7S so important was its low light capabilities. Right, right. And now the reason why Sony is a beast now is because if they keep it up, if they increase and do better with their bits their low light capabilities is banana and their autofocus is crazy right now like but no they, one's yeah, touching they, that they gotta go raw they gotta they, they gotta no i agree they have i agree to. but that's the big mystery yeah. yeah acr that's that's the next thing right now and you know we've been rocking acr since 2012 <laughs> <laughs> but and remember what we went through to try and get our homemade version of hdr you know what i'm saying right. with the raw you know the the dual iso you know right, what I'm saying? Right. But back to stream waves. I don't want to leave that untouched. So is it available now? Yes, www.streamwaves.com. And what titles do you have on there now? S-T-R-E-A-M-W-A-Z-E. -E. Um, well, I have I have um, the one that you gave me. Well, you got my man uh, Chain Music, but you got... You got some nice documentaries on there. Yeah, I just can't remember all of the names. <laughs> you guys got to go. I mean, it's a very impressive site. Your catalog yeah. is deep. It's got some really interesting things, some documentaries. Don't you have one there? Uh, what's our guy's name? A couple of the rappers there, behind the scene story, well known yeah. Yeah. artists yeah. 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 that are up there. Yeah. You yeah. know, I got Nikki Barnes. I got, um, I got a lot of my stuff on there, of course. Um, and then I have some YouTube stuff on it too that, you know, a little couple of fillers. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, the stuff that's exclusive, it'll say Streamways um, Originals. And those those are the ones that you can't find anywhere else. Well, talk to us if it's okay, and you can embarrass me in public. Uh, this other special project you're working on about the songs that almost didn't happen. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, yeah, me and Dida, we, we got something that's about to pop off. And, uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be good, you know. You're gonna be a part of that, hopefully. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I I witnessed a couple of things that almost didn't happen. Yeah, right, right, right. So we're almost coming to a close now. Um, what's your ultimate goal when it comes to your productions? And I guess what that leads to is what is oh somebody wants to know what is the cost to join Streamwaves? It's free. It's free now. Now all all I need is the email address, and you're in. Cool. And that came from Avid, Avid Brooklyn. They yeah. wanted to know that. What I guess when I asked that question, what is your ultimate goal in, with your productions is what what will be your legacy? What what now I'm not asking what will you hope to be your legacy. I'm speaking prophetically on you. What will what what do you want to accomplish with what you've done and what, what you're going to do? Um what would I want to accomplish? Well, I just really just want people to know that um, that you know that that I always strive to be the best. I always strive for perfection, and um, you know, whatever I do, it's whatever I do, whatever I set out to do. Basically, it's you know, I'm, I'm trying to leave a mark. And I'm trying to let people know that, you know. Um, keep talking, keep talking. Don't go nowhere. Keep talking. Yeah. That I want to, you know, just be creative in everything that I do, where it be, you know, the book that I wrote. I wrote a book about um, my life story, and it talks about. It, we didn't talk about the book. There it is. Yes, yes. My life. And that covers everything. That pretty much tells you everything about my life, you know. And, you know, I just want to be. I just want to be the dude that keeps trying everything, man. You know, like, I'm the type of cat, like, I'm not the greatest piano player in the world, but if you give me a keyboard, you give me a drum machine, I could make a record. I could, you know, with, 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 with a, um, a chorus, a bridge, a verse. I can give you a whole joint, and you think Stevie Wonder probably did it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not a great keyboard player, but I know I could, if I put my mind to it, I can create something dope and crazy. And that and that, that goes the same for like building a website, same for Pro Tools, same for they, they wanna know they wanna know how to get your book and is it on Amazon? 
Go to uh, thisisron.com, www.thisisron.com. Go, go to that website and the book will show.